Hey, what's going on, everybody? Joe Munoz, OneStepPrep.com. Juan and Joe, the J and J team, your friends in airline training program success. Question comes in a lot. Joe, recommended technique for landing the 320, brother. How do you do it? So I decided to make this video out of so many requests and so many questions coming about this, this particular topic. So I'm going to do this right now. I'm going to address this issue and give you some techniques that I use to land the 320. In addition to that, ground speed mini. Right? Everybody thinks it's this mystical pixie dust. And guess what? If you don't understand it, it is. But we're about to clarify it for you right now. And if you like this video that I'm about to shoot, check out OneStepPrep.com where you'll find myself, Joe Munoz, Juan Dominguez, right here, your friends in tight breading training program success, guiding you all the way to a successful outcome. Let's talk about this 320 landing right now, right? Look, the first thing, before I even give you any, anything further, right? Before we talk any further about it, you got to understand the landing flare mode, okay? In normal law, there are three modes, ground, flight, flare. I discuss each one of these in depth in the flight control laws video, but for now, let me just talk to you about the flare mode, okay? Flare mode, flare mode is basically available only in normal law, and what it is is that at 50 feet, 50 feet, okay? The ELAX will take a snapshot of your pitch attitude. 50 foot ELAX snapshot of your pitch attitude. So what does that mean? Look, if your pitch is five degrees, six degrees, it takes a little picture of it right there, the ELAX do, right? And now when you get down to 30 feet, this is all radio altitude by the way, right? This is RA and this is 30 feet RA over here. So when you get to 30 feet RA, what the aircraft is going to do is begin applying a nose down pitching moment over the period of eight seconds. So over the next eight seconds, the nose will begin to come down. If you were to go into a simulator, all right, don't try this in the airplane. If you were to go into a sim and basically allow the airplane to come in, get to 30 feet, don't even touch the side stick, you would find that the nose begins to come down on you, right? Now, this is the landing flare mode working and you got to understand why this works the way it does in order for you to have a nice smooth landing, all right? Or at least it'll help you in getting a smooth landing, right? Now the reason for this is because why? Think about a conventional airplane for a second. Go back to whatever you were flying before. Okay, I'm gonna use a 7.3 as an example because that's, um, it doesn't have a landing flare mode, right? Any airplane that doesn't have a landing flare mode, which would be basically anything that's not a, an Airbus, okay? Basically what happens is you pump the back, the, uh, the control column, and you give aft elevator inputs, right? So you're pumping, you're pumping, you're pumping, and in this pumping that you are doing there, essentially the elevator's deflecting up, going back to neutral, up, going back to neutral, and all you're doing is what? Holding the nose up and trying to arrest the sink rate. What happens in the 320 though, or any aircraft that's, a, that's an Airbus for that matter, what happens is the side stick commands G load demand. It's not a direct communication to the elevator, at least not in normal law. So what happens in the landing flare mode is that, think about this for a second. If you did not have this, okay, let's say the landing flare mode disappears, poof, it's gone. For just a second, right? You flare the airplane and you're basically commanding positive G change, positive G change, which means nose up, nose up, and then you let go of the stick. The airplane will just hover forever. You just fly, you're doing a low flyby, right? You're hovering over the runway. And so the flare mode is there to have that nose continuously brought down to prompt us to pump back pressure on the side stick. That's the whole deal with that, right? So when I'm coming into land, here's what I'm thinking about, and this is what you should be thinking about, about as well. 50 foot ELAC snapshot by 30 feet, I'm expecting that nose to start coming down. I'm expecting it, right? So I know that I'm going to need to start pumping back pressure by 30 feet at the latest. Yeah. Now remember, this is going to be over a period of eight seconds. Okay. And why is it over a period of eight seconds? Because a landing flare should be seven seconds. From the time you cross over the numbers to the time that the main wheels touch the pavement, seven seconds have gone by, you should be on the ground. That's the average time, right? So eight seconds is given to us by Airbus. Now, let's talk about this next, yeah? As you approach this runway, okay, I'm gonna back it up here to 50 feet. I'm not, the first thing I'm thinking about is transitioning from an approach pitch attitude into a arresting of sink rate pitch attitude. I'm not thinking about flaring. The first thing I'm thinking about is I want to arrest the rate of descent because any three degree glide path, roughly, approximately 750 foot per minute is going to be what you see on your VSI, rate of descent. You agree? Now, what I'm trying to do is cut that in half. 
okay? Or maybe slightly right around the half mark is actually a really good point for you, right? And I'm not focusing on this, folks. I'm looking outside the window. This is something you gotta keep in mind. I'm looking outside the window and I'm just have my eyes at the end of the runway and what I'm focusing on is a resting sink rate. I'm not trying to flare quite yet. I'm just rounding out an arresting sink rate. Now, right around the 50 foot mark, I start thinking about pretty soon, not quite yet, pretty soon I'm gonna bring the thrust levers back to idle. Then you hear the aircraft counting down, radio altitude, 50, 40, 30, 30 feet, I cut it right all the way back. And once I bring the thrust levers to idle, at that point, we no longer have the thrust levers in the active range of the auto thrust system, okay? And now, what we're gonna do is focus primarily on the flare. Thrust is at idle, eyes at the end of the runway, and I'm holding the nose up. Now look, um, you're gonna need to pump slightly because the flare mode is working in normal law, right? So 50 feet, we begin rounding out, right? Round, rounding out to me, this is just, this is just like a, a technique, right? You know, look, you can, if you have something that works for you, do it, run with it. And this is just a technique for you to, for you to apply. So I'm kind of rounding out, right? I'm a resting sink rate, not quite flaring yet, just a resting sink rate. Certainly by 40, I start thinking about 30 feet. I'm going to start push, pulling in that back pressure, mindful of the tail strike. Okay. Keep this in mind, specifically if you're in a 321. Okay. Don't go yanking too hard. You got to be, be easy, man. Be easy. Okay. Go nice and slow. Relax. All right. 30 feet comes up. Idle thrust. And now I'm focusing with my eyes at the end of the runway down here. And I'm now at this point transitioning into the flare. Now, as I transition into the flare, you may need to kind of hold a little bit of back pressure, pump slightly. You just think about it as a normal landing. Think of it as a normal landing at this point, because that's what it should feel like. And the main thing for you to know right now and understand is this rounding out part. I think that's one of the things that's going to help you uh, greatly as you um, uh, look into landing this airplane a lot more smoother, right? Now, look, something that may or may not help you. Let me give you this tip right here. Okay, I've given this tip to various pilots. It's helped some and others not so much. Take it for what it's worth and apply it and see what it does for you. What you can imagine is that the 30 foot mark is where the aircraft enters into a rubber band that is surrounding the runway. Think about this for a second. You're like, Joe, man, what are you talking about? <laughs> I'm trying to land an Airbus, man. Think about it like this for just a second. There's a rubber band surrounding the runway, okay? And at 30 feet, the nose happens to be, right, let me bring this a little bit closer here. You bring your aircraft in, and right around that 30 foot mark, we basically fly right into this band that's surrounding the runway, and the band is gonna begin to apply nose down pressure. This is the landing flare mode, so to speak. This is just another angle for you to think about, right? You're flying into this band that's surrounding the runway, and there's downward pressure that is being produced by this rubber band, so to speak. It's squeezing the nose down to the pavement. It's squeezing down. So remember what I said earlier, if you were in a sim at 30 feet, you would notice the nose starts coming down. So think of it almost as like a clamp or a rubber band that's pulling the nose down towards the pavement and you're acting against that band. That would be just one way for you to think about the landing flare mode a little bit differently. And as you have that in your mind on the landing flare, maybe that would help you potentially, right? So remember, 50 feet, eyes to the end of the runway, I'm thinking about uh, reducing the sink rate, right? Cutting that, that rate of descent. 40 feet, think about that flare, start bringing the nose up slightly, 30 feet, okay? Idle thrust, my nose gets caught in that little clamp, that band, it starts coming down, and I, now I go into the traditional flare that we're all used to, right? You start pumping that side stick aft pressure, and ultimately what I'm trying to do is ho just hover, right? This is, if you wanna get a greaser, look, don't use up the whole runway. Let me just start with that right now. If you fly a perfect approach and you're right on the center line and it's silky, silky smooth, it will only be that smooth until you run off the end of the runway. This is why I'm telling you folks, I'm looking for in a sim and in real life, what I'm looking to do is center line, touchdown zone. Those are the two priorities. If it's smooth in the end, perfect. If I get a nice greaser, awesome. But that's not the number one priority. Center line, touchdown zone. Focus on those two first. Now, to get it smooth, right? My thing, going back to that, I'm gonna try to hold the nose up and hold the mains just off the runway and allow the energy to bleed off. I'm letting the speed bleed off and ideally what I want is for the speed to bleed off just enough to allow me to sink right to a nice touchdown. Super smooth. Everybody in the cabin's like, did, did we even land yet or not? That's when you're like, man, this is awesome. I don't even know if I'm on the ground yet. So that is the thing. Those are the tips that I could offer to you how to land the aircraft. Understand the flare mode, round out at 50 feet. Think about that rubber band, right, uh, technique. 
If it helps you, great. If not, don't worry. Okay, apply something else. Eyes to the end of the runway always, right? And just focus on landing it normal. Okay, don't even try, don't think, oh, I have laws, I have a flare mode, I gotta do something different. No, you don't. It's the same thing. But if you understand what it, the way it works and why it works that way, it helps you a lot. It helps you quite a bit.